And if we take a standard caloric intake of 2000 calories a day, that's already over your 10% threshold. That's huge. So is red meat consumption a concern? <laughs> Hey guys, Fitness Science here, and this is part three of the video on meat and heart health. Now, we're going to be taking a direct look at whether saturated fats, like we spoke about and explained in part two, are actually related to heart disease because saturated fats are found primarily a lot in red meat. So we're going to answer the question in this video, is red meat consumption a problem because of its saturated fat specifically for plaque development and heart disease risk? Well, we need to firstly look at how much meat we're actually eating. To understand if it's even a problem, we need to actually understand how much saturated fat we're consuming as a population. The recommended amount of saturated fat in our diet should be about 5%. So total calories across the day, only about 5% should come from saturated fat. And yet the average American is eating how much? 11% coming from saturated fat. So over double the recommended amount. So we can say, yes, it could be a problem if saturated fats are going to be particularly bad for heart disease risk, but then does the heart to diet hypothesis actually stand up given these facts? Now the heart to diet hypothesis, which I explained in the first two videos of this video series is the idea that what we intake, so the fat that we intake from our diet directly impacts our heart disease risk. And if we intake a lot of, lot of bad fat, then there actually may be more plaque development in our coronary arteries than what we would do if we swapped out those fats for a different type of fuel source or a healthier fat altogether. And it does seem to stand up when saturated fat intakes are greater than 10% of our total calories per day. In fact, 15 randomized control trials looked at this very issue and they found that if you drop your saturated fat intake to under 10% of your total daily calories, your heart disease risk drops by 17%. And the reason for this that the researchers stated and a really nice interplay between the two hypotheses is that a lower intake of saturated fat leads to a lower LDL cholesterol concentration. And with a lower LDL concentration, therefore a lower LDL, so low density lipoprotein and very low density lipoprotein, you're not getting that buildup of plaque that you may have got if you have lots of LDL depositing fat into the walls of your arteries and just being very pro-inflammatory in that nature. And if we want a visual representation of what kind of fats are good and bad for our health, we can look at this graph, which was a really interesting study, which swapped out saturated fatty acids for other types of fats and fuel sources and looked at the relative risk factor for heart disease that came as a result of swapping out these fuel sources. As you can see, swapping out the saturated fats for trans fats, which I spoke about in part two, which trans fats are just absolutely disgusting for our diet. They're found a lot primarily in fatty foods like processed fast foods, burgers, donuts, just crappy food that, you know, is really, really high calorie, but incredibly high GI and just sugary, disgusting, high fat foods like deep fried stuff. These chemically are actually the worst types of fats for our arteries because they're really, really pro-inflammatory. The chemical structure is such that when they interact with our vessels and our arteries, they're super pro-inflammatory and deposit very easily onto our artery walls. You will get a lot of plaque development building up if you have a lot of these trans fats going into your mouth and essentially body, as we can see from this graph, because the visual representation is such that the changes in risk, you have a large spike in the risk factor for heart disease when you substitute saturated fatty acids for trans fats, which we already know, like I said, are really bad for your health. And substituting all the saturated fatty acids in your diet for healthier fats like monounsaturated fatty acids and polyunsaturated fat fatty acids, which are MUFA and PUFA, PUFA? Anyway, what we get is a large reduction in the relative risk for heart disease because these fats are healthier and they're not leading to an increase in LDL levels. Like if you're taking in heaps of crappy fat like saturated fats and trans fats, your body is going to transport those fats using the LDL because you know, you're know you having a lot of it and the LDL concentrations typically like those kinds of fats. And that's when you're going to get problems with plaque building up in your arteries. So it would be a good idea if your saturated fatty acids are comprising a large component of your diet to try and swap these out for poofers and moofers. Now, what are these foods? These are things like fish, so your salmons, your tunas, your mackerels, all types of nuts like walnuts, seeds, vegetable oils, nut butters, olive oils, peanut butter, all these kinds of fats would be a lot healthier to have in your diet as opposed to saturated fatty acids. Now, considering meat, a nine ounce or 250 gram ribeye steak is already 
25 grams of saturated fat. And if we take a standard caloric intake of 2000 calories a day, that's already over your 10% threshold. That's huge. So is red meat consumption a concern? Well, yes, if you're having 10%. So it probably wouldn't be a good idea to have 25 grams in a ribeye steak of saturated fats every single day for seven days a week for the rest of your life, because that's a lot of saturated fatty acids that is probably not going to be very good for you in the long term in terms of plaque development. It would be a better idea to start substituting these fatty acids out for like the better fats that I just spoke about. And if you already have risk factors for cardiac disease, it may be an idea to try and get your saturated fatty acid intake under 10% or even down to five to 6% of your total calories per day. Now, overall, the saturated fat in meat is not going to kill you. A few steaks here and there is not going to be a concern, but it's just this chronic exposure to high levels of meat and high levels of saturated fats that may start to be a concern for plaque development because saturated fats are not the healthiest fats that you should be having for plaque development and saving your coronary arteries. Over many, many years, you're going to have that LDL traveling around your body and depositing it in places you really don't want. We don't want fat in our arteries, blood vessels, in our coronary arteries or around our body because that causes blockages and then you get a heart attack or you know, stroke or whatever. So overall, my big conclusion is that if you're having about 10% or over of your total calories coming from saturated fats per day, you probably want to think about just bringing this back a tiny bit, dialing it back. I'm not saying cut out steaks completely or red meat, but I'm just saying think about your fat sources and think about substituting them. You know, avocados, peanut butters, nut butters, olive oils, and fish are just some examples of some fats that you could substitute for the saturated fatty acids and you know, even if it's just one or two days a week to start, then you're getting some nicer fats into your body. And we know from the data that these kind of fats really reduce your risk of heart disease compared to trans fats and saturated fats. So final conclusion, trans fats and saturated fats are not good. In fact, the trans fats are way at the end of the spectrum and are the worst, closely followed by saturated fats. So we want to sort of keep that under 10% of our total calories per day. And then we have the poly and mono unsaturated fatty acids that are the best. And then we can also think about carbohydrates as another fuel source to substitute the fatty acids as well. Things like low GI carbohydrates, whole grains and stuff like that would be really, really beneficial as well as the data shows. And if you only take one thing away from this video, please stay away from goddamn trans fats. I hate those things and they are disgusting. It's such a shame that they taste so good because the things that taste so good are often the worst for us. And it cannot be as true as in this case, trans fats are absolutely the worst thing for our health. Please stay away from trans fats. In fact, it's so bad that the US government outlawed them and banned trans fats in 2019. That's just how bad they are for our health and heart disease risk. So stay away from trans fats. And if you're eating more than 10% of saturated fats, especially from red meat, think about just reducing this, maybe cut out a steak here and there per night and see how you go. You know, fish can taste just as good as steak. Wait, really? And it's a really actually quite a nice option to get those monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fatty acids into your body. Thank you so much for watching guys. Really appreciate all your support. I will see you in the next video, which is part four, and that is going to be on the relationship of cancer to meat risk. Thanks guys, see you soon.